Hello my friends, this is Meena Gandhi. I have cooked some uh, potato on green peas uh, curry and I want to share this recipe with you. So I'm going to show you step by step uh, along with the ingredients how I have cooked it. So kindly watch my video till end. Thank you. These are the ingredients. There is one and a half cup chopped onion, one and a half cup chopped potato cubes. I, I skinned them and I uh, made uh, cubes like that not too big cubes just um, small to medium size then there is half cup chopped tomato there is quarter cup uh, green peas these are frozen green peas so you just thaw it then there is half cup coconut milk powder um, i'm going to add warm water to it and make a thick paste so there i'm going you have to add it slowly very slowly and so that it doesn't create any lumps and keep stirring. So I have added about half cup of warm water to it and I kept stirring and broke all the lumps. You can also make coconut milk out of fresh grated coconut or frozen grated coconut. What you do is you just add a little bit of water to it and then grind it in a mixer and sieve it. So it gives you kind of coconut milk that you can use it for these kind of recipes then there is all these whole masalas as one teaspoonful of cumin seeds one small piece of uh, cinnamon about just about an inch half of the uh, tej patta that is bay leaf then there is half teaspoon turmeric powder that is haldi then there's four whole uh, black peppers kali mirch then there is uh, three cloves, black cloves, one green uh, part of, of green cardamom and one black cardamom whole part. Then there is one flat teaspoon of garam masala powder, uh, one hip teaspoon of red chili powder, one hip teaspoon of dhania powder that is coriander powder. Then there is two teaspoons of ginger, garlic and chili paste. I took equal amounts of ginger, garlic and chili and I just added a little bit of water and made a smooth paste so I can store it and then I use it as per my need and then there is one flat teaspoon of kasuri methi also there is four tablespoons of oil in it I also have one tablespoon tomato paste then I have two teaspoons of salt flat teaspoons and I'm going to um, when I'm cooking I'm going to adjust the taste I might not use the whole amount or I might need the whole amount and I might have to add some more so I'm going to taste it while I cook it and then there is some thinly chopped uh, coriander fresh coriander leaves I have uploaded a video earlier which shows you how to wash coriander or other green leafy vegetables which can be very helpful for the people who are just learning to cook so first I'm going to heat the cooking oil in this cooking pan for about on a high heat for about few minutes once it is hot enough i'm going to add the dry spices all these dry ones and then i'm going to add onion and fry it till it is golden brown transparent i'm going to manipulate the heat just to make sure that it doesn't get burned now i'm going to add my spices and sort them just for a minute or so Then add the onions. I'm going to fry these on medium to high heat, stirring it all the time till the onion gets soft and it is golden brown in color. It's kind of transparent. You have to make sure it doesn't get burnt so that if it gets burnt, it really ruins the taste of, of the food you're cooking. After adding onion, I'm going to just add a little bit of salt, 1 8 spoon of salt to the onion. It will help getting onion cooked fast, say 2 pinches maybe. After about 5 minutes, I have reduced the heat and I am still stirring the onion. It isn't cooked yet, so it will take another few minutes. So I have fried the onion for good 10 minutes. Uh, for six minutes on high and then once it started getting like golden color I reduced the heat so now it is a, a golden and transparent so it took good 10 minutes so but you have to keep stirring it constantly now I'm going to add the green paste and fry it till it is uh, for about two three minutes till the 
smell goes away because you don't want too strong a smell of that paste. It kind of has a raw smell because it has got garlic etc in it. So I'm going to fry it for another two minutes, and then I'm going to add tomatoes. I'm going to add half of the garam masala. I'm going to keep half for the uh, topping it at the end. Then there is chili powder. I'm going to add just now and coriander powder. So. So after adding ginger, garlic, and chili paste, I fried it for another two to three minutes. Then I have added the chopped tomato, uh, red chili powder, uh, coriander powder, and then half of the garam masala powder. I have saved the half, and I'm going to also add just a little bit of salt from this quantity that I have. So I'm going to now fry this well on a low heat, and then I'm going to. Uh, cover it up for couple three minutes. After adding tomatoes and spices, please make sure you reduce the heat and stir it up and then cover it up and let it get cooked for another two to three minutes. After about four to five minutes, the tomato is mixed very well with onion and is cooked well. So I'll add potatoes, green peas, and tomato paste and then mix it well. I have mixed it with the vegetables well with tomatoes. Now at this stage, if you think it looks too dry, you can add a little bit of oil from the sides. It's okay to do that. So as per your choice and liking, some people like it oily, and we don't use too much oil, so that's why I'm not going to add more oil to it. But it's up to the individual. I have now increase the heat a little bit, and I keep stirring the potatoes for another three minutes, and then. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it and then cook them and at the same time I'm going to also right now I'm going to add little extra salt so far this is the third time adding salt so I'm going to now mix it nicely for about two minutes two to three minutes you have to keep uh, stirring it so that the potatoes get coated very well with the with the spice. After stirring the potato and green peas mixture for about five minutes, I'm going to now slowly add warm water, about a cup full of warm water to this, and then mix it again. At this stage, I'm going to taste it and adjust my salt, and then bring it to boil on a high heat. So, let me add a little bit of salt to it. I have still saved some more salt away from the total quantity I mentioned in the beginning which was 2 teaspoons. Now I am going to increase the heat. I will taste this and then I will adjust the salt. I have increased the heat to high and I am going to boil it on high heat for a few minutes. It started boiling so I am going to cover it up and after few minutes I am going to see if the potato is cooked. After 3 minutes, I am going to stir it again and at this stage, I am going to reduce the heat and keep it covered again because potatoes are not cooked yet. I have reduced the heat to low. Now let it get cooked. It's going to take a while. It took about good 14 minutes to get the potatoes cooked. Now they are pretty soft. So we just try to see if they cut easily. Yes, they are. Now I am going to add the coconut milk. And I'm going to sprinkle the remaining uh, garam masala powder on the top, the kasuri methi. Adjust the taste by adjusting um, a little more salt to it if I need it. And then a trick to balancing the taste is you just add a pinch of sugar on the top. That's my trick to it. And then I'm going to add the uh, chopped cilantro leaves. I also added quarter more cup of water because I wanted a little bit loose the consistency and I added all the spices and everything and now I am going to mix it nicely. At this stage, I am going to increase the heat again to the maximum, bring it to the boil and then reduce the heat uh, and cover it up and simmer it. So then the curry will be ready. The taste is amazing of this curry. That pinch of sugar, about this much, which I added at the end, that makes a world of a difference. That's my secret recipe for this very super delicious curry I made. Make sure you do add the that pinch of sugar at the end. 
So I'm now going to simmer it for few minutes. Reduce the heat. Once it starts boiling, reduce it to the minimum for about a minute or two and that's it. Also, one more tip I want to give you for this curry. If you don't like the coconut milk, you can use the full cream. But you don't need so much. You can just use three or four maybe tablespoons and adjust the water quantity. So that that also tastes very good. It is just to mellow down the uh, the spices basically. So this potato and green peas curry is ready. It's really tasty. Well, my friends, I hope that you like my video. And if you liked it, please subscribe to my channel and share this with your friends and family. And please do send the comments. I really appreciate that. Have a nice day and thank you for watching this video. Bye.